Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India All right, so you know uh, we are trying to discuss uh, uh, the notion of focusing attention at a point which means you are trying to understand uh, uh, geometrically how to study functions at a point and the device for that is commutative algebraically the device is called the local ring. So uh, I told you last time that uh, if x uh, is a variety of course which means that x could be either an affine variety or a quasi affine variety or a projective variety or a quasi projective variety and you have p a capital p a point of x we have the local ring of x at p so uh, well in fact to expand it it is actually called the local ring of uh, germs of regular functions of x uh, the, the local ring of germs of regular functions at p okay so uh, so so in fact let me write this as local ring of germs of regular functions at p and how was this defined this was defined in the following way we uh, we took uh, uh, ox p tilde to be the set of all uh, pairs of the of the form u comma f such that uh, u contains p uh, u is an open open subset of uh, x and f is a regular function on u. So you take the set of all such pairs, and then what you do is you go modulo uh, an equivalence relation, okay, to get uh, a surjection from this into the local ring. And what is this equivalence relation? The equivalence relation is well, uh, uf is equivalent to vg if and only if. Uh, Uh, by definition uh, f restricted to u intersection v is equal to g restricted to u intersection okay. So, uh, so this is an equivalence relation you are just identifying uh, 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 you are just identifying functions on the intersection and of course you know uh, for this uh, this is also this is also equivalent to uh, this is also equal to just assume requiring that it requiring that f restricted to w is equal to g restricted to w for an open w inside u intersection because if a regular function 
if two regular functions uh, coincide on an open subset non empty open subset uh, then uh, they of course uh, coincide everywhere right. So uh, so I need not uh, require that the point P is in W uh, so this uh, is a local ring and uh, uh, if you if you start with an element here u comma f its image here is written with a square bracket and it is called the germ of the function f okay and the germ of the function f uh, whenever a pair u comma f is equivalent to a pair v comma g then in the local ring they will give the same they will give rise to the same germ okay the germ of f and the germ of g will be one and the same right. So and I told you that uh, OXP is a local ring is a, is a local ring with uh, 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 unique maximal ideal ideal uh, MXP and MXP what is the maximum ideal it is germs of all those functions which vanish at the point P. So MXP is all those germs u comma f such that f of p is 0. So germs of those regular functions defined in a neighborhood of the point p which vanish at p okay and uh, so we saw that uh, uh, how did we show that this is a maximal ideal here we showed this is a maximal ideal here by uh, showing that if there is a germ of which does not vanish at p then it will by continuity not vanish in an open neighborhood containing p and on that open neighborhood it will become invertible okay. So, uh, so it will become a unit so in other words a germ of a function that, that does not vanish at p namely an element here which is outside here is a unit. So you have a characterization uh, of local rings in commutative algebra which is a simple uh, lemma you can prove it for yourself if you have a commutative ring with 1 and if there is an ideal such that everything outside that ideal is a unit then that ideal has to be the maximal ideal unique maximal ideal and therefore the ring will become a yeah, local ring okay. So this is what is happening here so you have a commutative ring with 1 and you have this this is obviously an ideal and everything outside it is a unit so this is the unique maximal ideal for this local ring and this ring is local. Okay. Of course all these are even k algebras okay o, <coughs> OXP is actually a k algebra. <coughs> so, uh, so the point is uh, 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 so focusing attention at a point corresponds uh, geometrically uh, focusing attention at a point uh, which means trying to study regular functions at a point that commutative algebraically uh, boils down to studying local rings okay. Now the point I want to make is that uh, why is this important so here is the lemma so the lemma is uh, 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 by the way I forgot to tell you that there is an obvious uh, way in which addition and multiplication is, is, is defined here okay maybe I will just recall it uh, you have u comma f uh, you have a germ you add you you add it with v comma g uh, by simply adding the functions on the intersection. So you just take u intersection v and uh, take f restricted to u intersection v uh, plus g restricted to u intersection v okay. So you take the germ of this pair. I asked you to check that this uh, addition which is defined like this using representatives of equivalence classes is well defined it is pretty easy to see. Uh, so of course instead of addition I could also put multiplication and if it is multiplication I will have to put multiplication here of course and uh, the 0 element 
is uh, the zero element is given by the function zero, the germ of the function zero, and the uh, um, unit element, uh, the multiplicative identity element, is given by the uh, constant function one, which is also uh, of course constant functions are all regular functions. Okay, so zero and one are just given by the germ of the zero function, the constant function zero, and one is just the germ of the constant function one, which takes the value one. Okay, so. Uh, now the dilemma is the following: uh, if if u is an open subset uh, of X containing P, then O X P is the same as O U P. So, uh, so this is the important. This is the local. This is the localness. Namely, uh, the local ring at a point of a variety uh, depends only on it. It depend, depends only on the neighborhood of the point. Okay, it doesn't depend on the ambient variety. So, if you take, uh, so if you have a point, if the point P of your variety is lying in an open set, okay, then of course u is an open subset of a variety and therefore u and of course u contains a point p so it is uh, non empty all right and it is of course uh, uh, irreducible okay and the point is that uh, an open subset of a variety is also a variety okay an open subset of a variety is also a variety right uh, whether your uh, so this is a fact that you can check uh, using simple topology uh, an open subset of a variety is automatically a variety right so of course if the variety is an affine variety an open subset will become a quasi affine variety if the variety is a projective variety the open subset will become a quasi projective variety if, a, if the variety is a quasi affine variety then an open subset of that will continue to be a quasi affine variety if it is a quasi projective variety an open subset will continue to be a quasi projective variety okay. So in any case an open subset of a variety is again a variety right. Therefore, I can think of the local ring of the point P with respect to the variety U, okay, and there is no difference between the local ring uh, of the variety the local ring at P, whether you are considering P as a point of U or P as a point of X, okay. That is the purpose of the lemma. So, uh, well, what is the importance of this lemma? The importance of this lemma is the following give me any variety, you know, we proved last time that any variety can be covered by finitely many open subsets each of which is isomorphic to an affine variety therefore if you give me any variety and give me a point on a variety okay I can choose an affine open subset I can choose an open subset containing the point which is isomorphic to an affine variety and therefore by this lemma I just have to calculate always <coughs> the local ring of an affine variety at a point okay that will give me the local rings of any variety at any point okay and when you calculate the local ring of an affine variety at a point there is an explicit formula for that in competitive algebra it is simply given by the localization of the uh, affine coordinate ring at the maximal ideal corresponding to that point okay that is what I will show next okay. So this lemma is very useful uh, namely it tells you uh, what the local ring looks like at least <coughs> more explicitly in terms of competitive algebra this definition of local ring here is a very general process you could do it uh, in in very general circumstances you could take x to be a topological space and in and for functions you could just take continuous real valued functions or continuous complex valued functions or you could take x to be a uh, manifold uh, say a domain in uh, euclidean space and you can take fu functions to be you know uh, uh, so many times differentiable or infinitely differentiable namely c infinity functions or you could even take x to be a domain in the complex in complex n dimensional space and you could take the functions to be holomorphic functions holomorphic in each variable and you can always do this process and this process will always lead you to a local ring okay. So the process is very general so the the fact that you are getting a local ring is is very beautiful it is something that tells you that geomet 
local rings come out of geometry by focusing attention at a point. But then the question is what is this local ring? If you ask the question what this local ring is, can you write it down as some nice ring that you know in terms of rings that you know, then the answer to that comes from this lemma. Uh, for example, if you choose uh, u to be an affine open subset of x, that is an open subset of x which is isomorphic to an affine variety, then uh, what I am going to say later on will tell you how to write down that uh, that local ring okay all right so uh, so you see uh, so let's prove this is very easy to prove it's pretty easy to prove so the proof is rather uh, proof is rather simple so you know you have oxp <coughs> so you have ox uh, uh, or rather i should say uh, i oxp tilde okay and uh, that is o u p tilde okay and the quotient of o x p tilde uh, by the equivalence relation as I have defined here uh, is going to give me the local ring o x p and similarly if I take the quotient by this equivalence relation here I am going to get the local ring o u p okay and what I want to say is to say that these two are uh, isomorphic it is very very simple. So, what I do is I give a map from here to here okay. So, namely you give me you give me u comma f uh, here you, you give me an element here. So, this consists so this consists of a pair uh, this consists of a pair uh, which has a function f which is regular on the open set u which contains the point p. Uh, maybe I should not use the same u let me use something else let me use v <coughs> because u is already fixed let me use v. So, if you have a, a pair v comma f then I have v an open subset of the point p f is a regular function on v okay. Now, after all I can simply send it to I can just restrict it to uh, v intersection u. So, I can just v I can just take v intersection u comma f restricted to v intersection u I can do this see a restriction of a regular function to an open set is continues to be a regular function because the notion of a regular function is local okay that is one thing. Then the second thing is <coughs> any two open sets any two non empty open sets will always intersect because uh, because of irreducibility okay. So, all our varieties are irreducible. So, any two any 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 two non empty open sets will intersect any non empty open set will be irreducible it will be dense okay that is the that is the coarseness of the Zariski topology right. So, uh, so, there will always be an intersection and of course, the intersection will contain the point p because p is already in u p is also in v. So, if p, p is also in u v intersection u and uh, uh, so, this is a this is a well defined map like this all right and what you must understand is that uh, this map also uh, this map will also respect the equivalence namely if two functions uh, on x if two regular, regular functions in neighborhood of the point p in uh, 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 coincide in, in a smaller neighborhood they will also do so when you restrict them to uh, when you restrict these functions to u the intersection with u okay. So, this so what this will tell you is that this will induce a map like this. So, that this diagram commutes okay you will get a map like this okay and uh, uh, it is easy to check that this map is actually an isomorphism okay. In fact, you can check that this map is uh, you, you say it is a natural identification okay. So, so what you do is uh, uh, so, so you, the fact that you the, the fact that you need a map like this uh, boils down to checking that this map respects the equivalence relation okay. So, which means that if two things are equivalent here then the images there are equivalent once you have that this map goes down to a map like this okay. And then uh, uh, which means that this map is not just a map of sets, but it is also a map which preserves the equivalence relation on these two sets okay. So, it goes down to a map of the equivalence classes okay. So, you have a map like this and then what I want to say is that this map is uh, you can um, it is you can explicitly check that this map is both injective and surjective because you know see if I have uh, a germ of a function v comma f well the map that is going to 
b here is going to be I am going to send v comma f to v u intersection v uh, comma f restricted to u intersection v and germ okay this is this is going to be the map here all right and because this map is induced by this map right now you see now it is very easy why is this it is very clear that this is going to preserve uh, both the addition and this map is going to preserve your addition multiplication and so on. So, this will be a k algebra homomorphism it is going to preserve addition multiplication uh, it is going to take uh, uh, 0 to 0 uh, 0 element to 0 element ok uh, and it is going to take uh, uh, 1 to 1 ok. Uh, so, this map is uh, uh, you, you can almost see that you know the germ of f at the point p uh, where f lives on v is going to be literally the same as the germ of uh, f restricted to u intersection v because after all it is the same function you have just restricted it and it should define literally the same germ. So, in fact this should be thought of as actually an identification, but if you want to formally say it you have to say it is a k algebra is a homomorphism it is injective and surjective. So, uh, so the, the fact is why is it injective if this is 0 ok if this germ is 0 it means that fu the function f restricted to u intersection v uh, is, is equal to the 0 function on a smaller uh, open subset of u intersection v which contains the point p, but then by uh, uh, but if two regular functions equal on an open set then they are equal everywhere. So, it will tell you that f itself is identically the 0 function on v ok. So, the moral of the story is that uh, if something goes to 0 then this is 0 that tells you that this is injective ok and then how will you get surjectivity if you give me if you give me uh, 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 if you give me anything here actually the, the beautiful thing is anything here is also an element here. So, actually there is a map in this direction also namely you give me any uh, 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 if you give me any function defined on an open neighborhood inside u if you give me a regular function on an open neighborhood inside u inside u of p that is also an element here ok. So, there is a reverse map ok and that will introduce a reverse map here all right. So, that is that is the reason why it is surjective. So, the the fact is that uhhh uh, oxp to uh, oup is an isomorphism this is an isomorphism. So, uhhh it is so you know uh, So, it is obviously an isomorphism, but you know we tend to treat it as an equality we tend to treat it as an equality with the uh, with the understanding that you are uh, literally uh, taking the germ of the same function, but restricted to a smaller neighborhood ok. So, uh, so that is the proof of this lemma ok. Uh, now, uh, so what is the corollary to this? very important corollary to this is uh, if x is a if x is a uh, if x uh, yeah if x is a variety and uh, p belongs to x choosing uh, uh, u to be an open subset of x isomorphic to an affine variety containing p we see that all uh, possible local rings all possible local rings are uh, 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 can be computed uh, up to k algebra isomorphism 
as local rings of points of affine varieties. So, this uses the important fact that uh, I stated in the previous lecture, lecture that any variety affords a finite open cover a cover by finitely many open sets each of which is isomorphic to an affine variety ok it uses that fact. So, uh, so finally uh, so there is there is another thing that has that has uh, uh, that has uh, gone into in between the lines which I should have said but I will say that now. So, I want to I want to say the following thing I want to say that uh, this local ring this is a uh, this is an invariant uh, uh, it is an invariant of the point on the variety ok. So, uh, so what I am trying to say is that it does not change uh, uh, under isomorphisms. So, you know if you have a variety and you have a point then you have the local ring at that point if this uh, is if this variety is isomorphic to another affine another variety ok and under this isomorphism this point goes to another point then uh, this isomorphism will automatically induce an isomorphism of the local ring of the source variety at the source point with the local ring of the target variety at the target point ok. So, you will get a you, you will get it automatically because the isomorphism will be induced by uh, the uh, by the pullback of uh, uh, functions ok. So, so let me write that uh, maybe I should say that maybe I should have said that before this. Uh, so, let me say that uh, the local ring uh, of x at p is in is uh, an invariant. So, what is an invariant an invariant is something uh, an invariant of a certain object geometric object or an invariant of a mathematical object is something that does not change or changes only up to isomorphism if you change uh, the object up to an isomorphism ok. So, what I am trying to say is that you know uh, uh, if you if you change x and p up to isomorphism then the local ring uh, will change only up to an isomorphism ok. So, that is if phi from x to y is an isomorphism of varieties then we get an isomorphism uh, phi uh, uh, of k algebras of O y phi p with O x p ok. So, so, so you know the situation is that you are having uh, uh, you have x comma p this is called a pointed variety that is a variety with a point ok and you have this this map phi which is an isomorphism that carries x comma p to y comma phi p ok. So, uh, when I write a pair like this it is a variety and a point on it ok and the map is just not supposed to respect the variety I mean it is not supposed to just go to this variety to that variety, but it is also supposed to take this point to that point which is which is what it does. And the point is that uh, the local ring uh, at of x at p will be isomorphic to the local ring of y at phi p uh, because of this uh, isomorphism and the the answer is the reason is very very simple see because you see what is going to happen is you have x you have y ok and you have phi. So, this phi will induce uh, by pullback uh, of regular functions. So, you know phi is a morphism of varieties basically phi is of course an isomorphism, but um, if, if phi is just even a morphism of varieties it is supposed to uh, pull back regular functions to regular functions ok. So, uh, phi is going to induce a pullback. So, the pullback is going to be uh, uh, phi upper star and uh, uh, what it is going to do is that you know uh, uh, it is going to go in this direction uh, you give me 
uh, uh, a regular function on uh, uh, an open subset y of uh, v okay uh, then I am going to get a regular function on uh, the open subset phi inverse of v uh, of x okay. So if you have uh, y and uh, uh, v an open subset of y then phi inverse v is going to be an open subset of x okay and uh, phi will uh, restrict to phi inverse v and take it into v this phi restricted to phi inverse v will be a morphism of the variety phi inverse v into v okay and give me any regular function on v uh, by composing it with phi I will get a regular function on phi inverse v that is the pullback map. So this map is just if you give me a g here I am going to get the uh, pullback which is just g followed by uh, 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 first apply phi then apply g this is phi this is the pullback okay this is part of the definition of a morphism the definition of a morphism is a continuous map which pulls back uh, given any target given any open subset of a target and given a regular function on it namely given a regular function on an open subset of the target then it pulls it back to give you a regular function of the inverse image of that open set on the source okay so this is so this is what happens and you can see that once you have this then you know uh, 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 you know o you have o y phi p tilde whose quotient by uh, uh, the equivalence uh, relation uh, uh, as I defined earlier is going to give you the local ring o y phi p and you have uh, o x uh, p tilde this is uh, whose quotient by uh, the corresponding equivalence relation is going to give you the local ring of x at p okay and the fact is that there is a map like this this is induced by phi upper star okay namely what it does is if you give me a v comma g it will send it to phi inverse v comma g circle phi okay it is going to send uh, uh, and uh, a pair here to a pair here okay and what is going to happen is that this is going to of course uh, respect the uh, the equivalence relations okay and therefore you are going to get a map like this okay. So this is this is this is via phi star okay and this also via phi star okay. So, uh, so what this diagram shows is that the moment you have morphism of varieties then you know and you take a point p if it goes to a point uh, phi p then you immediately have a, uh, a k algebra homomorphism of local rings in the opposite direction okay so this is a k algebra homomorphism this diagram of course commutes so does this okay so so you know you must uh, you must think of this as a as an infinitesimal version of the following fact see whenever you had uh, morphism of from one affine variety to another affine variety it induced a pullback from the regular functions on the target to the regular functions on the source okay when you have a morphism from one affine variety to another affine variety it induced a pullback function pullback of regular functions from the regular functions on the target to the regular functions on the source if you take the infinitesimal version what the infinitesimal version is is going to be this it is going to pull back germs of regular functions on the target at a point to germs of regular functions of the uh, at the source uh, uh, at the point of the source which corresponds to the target point okay. So uh, 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 it is very simple you have a regular function on v uh, you compose it with phi you get a regular function on phi inverse v. So the, so the germ of a regular function of on v at phi p is going to after composition with p is going to give you eventually uh, is going to define uh, the germ of a regular function uh, at p itself okay. So a regular function uh, in a neighborhood of phi p is after composition with uh, phi is going to give you a regular function uh, at p okay regular function in a neighborhood of p and therefore you are going to get a map on germs you are going to get this but the point is that 
if phi is an isomorphism okay then you also have a map in the other direction and you can check that these two maps are inverses of each other okay. So, whatever I have written here for phi I can also write for phi inverse because I can do that if I know phi is an isomorphism. So, whatever I wrote here I can write everything for phi inverse so I will get a map like this okay and then you can check that these two maps are inverses of each other okay these two maps are inverses of each other and uh, 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 therefore uh, these two that will give you an isomorphism of this with this okay. So, uh, uh, phi star uh, so you know this this map we are phi uh, by phi star I will call this as phi star uh, uh, this is phi star going down to the point phi p. So, so I will call this v of phi star ok let me not complicate the notation. So, phi star and uh, phi inverse star which is from O uh, x p to uh, O y uh, so phi inverse is going to be in this direction so it is going to be from O x p to O y phi p ok uh, are uh, inverses inverses to each other to each other and hence and hence uh, we get that phi star is an isomorphism of k algebras ok. So, this is the fact that I mean this is what uh, this remark says that you know uh, the local ring is an invariant if you change the variety up to isomorphism the local ring will not change it will change only up to k algebra isomorphism ok. Uh, and of course, we do not distinguish between uh, uh, we try not to distinguish between our varieties that are isomorphic. Uh, in the geometric uh, sense and we do not try to in, uh, distinguish between k algebras which are isomorphic in the commutative algebraic sense ok. So, uh, so well um, all right so, uh, so this is what I am trying to say here if, uh, if x is a variety and p is a point of x and you choose u to be an open subset of x which is isomorphic to an affine variety then under that isomorphism the local ring of x at p which is the same as the local ring of u at p according to this lemma will be isomorphic to the local ring of that affine variety uh, to which u is isomorphic at the point uh, which uh, the isomorphism carries p to ok. So, uh, it so somehow this this has to be thought of before uh, one can understand that properly. Now, now I come to the so, so the big deal is uh, uh, how do you calculate the what is the formula commutative algebraically for the local ring of uh, a, uh, at, uh, of an affine variety at a point ok. So, this is the so here is the so here is the theorem theorem uh, if f if x is an affine variety uh, and p in x is a point uh, corresponding to ok. So, uh, let me make a small then O x p is uh, is canonically isomorphic as k algebras to A x localized at M p as k algebras. So, this is isomorphic as k, k algebras where M p is the maximal ideal of A x ax which is the same as ox uh, corresponding to p ok. 
So, here is a formula for the local ring at a point of an affine variety. So, a local ring is just gotten by taking the uh, affine coordinate ring of the affine variety which you know is also the same as the ring of regular functions okay these two are the same for an affine variety and then you localize at the maximal ideal that corresponds to this point okay. So, uh, uh, of course localizing at an ideal uh, uh, means that you should uh, to for this to make sense you have to localize at either a certainly at a prime ideal because uh, localizing at a prime ideal or a maximal ideal means you invert everything outside uh, all the elements outside the prime ideal or the maximal ideal. So, this means take the ring A x and invert all the elements which are not in the maximal ideal corresponding to the point P okay. Uh, then the other thing is of course, uh, so I now I want to you, you to recall that you know according to the Nullstellensatz okay uh, the points of x the points of the affine variety x are in 1 to 1 correspondence with the maximal ideals in A x okay and this is just because uh, of uh, you know the Nullstellensatz that is more general that can be more generally applied to the affine space in which x is embedded in okay. So, uh, so here is a uh, so here is a proof of the theorem which is also pretty easy the proof is well uh, uh, so you have you have O x which is A x okay and from O x you have uh, the, the following map into uh, uh, O x p. So, here is my map you give me any regular function f uh, you just send it to the pair x comma f and the germ of that. So, simply send every regular function to its germ okay. So, f is in A x means that f is a regular function on all of x A x is the same as O x okay. So, the, the whenever you write a pair u comma phi, phi has to be a regular function on u okay. So, here f is a regular function on x. So, I can it makes sense to write the pair x comma f and then I am taking the germ that is why I put the square bracket okay. This is of course, a k algebra homomorphism this is k algebra homomorphism that is easy to check and uh, well uh, you can also see that is injective because you see uh, uh, you know if uh, the germ of f at at the point p is 0 it means that f coincides with this 0 function in the neighborhood of p, but then it has to coincide with 0 on all of x okay. So, if this is 0 then this is 0 so this is an injective homomorphism okay. Then you also have the localization map, so you have the localization map this is the localization of this ring A x at the maximal ideal corresponding to the, the point p okay. So, of course, you know m p is all those uh, uh, m p is all those uh, functions uh, uh, in A, A x which vanish at p that is all okay it is a it is a maximal ideal right. And uh, uh, so, you know the 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 fact is that uh, you get a you get a map alpha like this with because of the universal property of localization okay. See if you start with uh, uh, if you start with uh, g in O x such that uh, g of p is not 0 okay. Suppose you start with a uh, regular function global regular function on x g an element of O x which is same as A x and suppose g is not uh, going to vanish at the point p then this is equivalent to saying that g does not belong to m p. So, th so this is this implies that uh, you know g does not belong to m p. And if g does not belong to MP, its image in the localization will become a unit because localization uh, uh, has this property that it inverts all the elements which uh, which are outside MP. And since g is not in MP, is going to be inverted. So g under this localization map goes to a unit uh, in uh, in MP. Okay, and uh, so 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 you have this fact, all right and you should see that g will also go to unit there. If I take the image of g in O x here also it will go to a unit why because you see g will go to the germ of x comma g okay, but the germ of x comma g will not belong to m x p 
which is a because mxp is supposed to be uh, the germs of all those regular functions which vanish at p so but g does not vanish at p therefore the germ of g in the local ring corresponds to uh, 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 an invertible element a unit so you see every element uh, which is outside the maximal ideal mp is going to a unit here and therefore this uh, uh, there is a universal property of localization which says that uh, whenever you have a, a, a ring homomorphism from a given ring to another ring with the property that it in inverts all the elements that are inverted by uh, the localization process then that ring then that homomorphism has to factor from the localization the the localizing the localized ring is a, in some sense the initial object okay so this is called the universal property of localization so there exists there exists alpha uh, there is a unique alpha by universal property of localization and you know it is very easy to write down what that alpha is see alpha see an element here will look will look like f by g okay an element in the localization will look like uh, f by g where f is a regular function g is a regular function but g is not in mp that means g doesn't vanish at p that's how elements here will look like okay and alpha of f by g is going to be very simple the the uh, it's going to be just uh, 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 you just take the image under this so you get the germ of f times you see the germ of g is invertible so it will be this times germ of g inverse okay this is what it will be and what is this this is you know if you think about it this is just you know uh, uh, this is just x f germ of f times germ of uh, g inverse is what I mean g g does not vanish at the point p so g will not vanish in uh, a neighborhood of the point p which means that d g the uh, the set of all points where g does not vanish inside x so d g uh, uh, d g will contain p and it will be an open set which contains p okay and uh, you can write 1 by g as a regular function on dg so this will be just uh, x intersection dg uh, comma 1 by g this makes sense this is what it is and uh, so and you know uh, uh, so this is this is how the map is defined this is how the map is defined so in fact if you now if you take the product you have to take the product on the intersection so it will be just x intersection dg f by g this is the uh, uh, this is the map because you see f by g is certainly a regular function on x intersection dg and it is a germ of this function so this is the map okay now you can see very easily that this map is both injective and surjective okay uh, why is it injective well you know if f by g vanishes okay if the regular function f by g vanishes in a neighborhood of the point then you know see what it is going to tell tell you is that uh, it is going to tell you that uh, uh, yeah so what will happen is that it will tell you that f by g and 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 and, and 0 and the 0 function they are equal on this open set d, uh, x intersection dg which is a which is an uh, you know dense open subset of x okay so that will tell you that f has to be f has to be 0 okay so uh, uh, so the moral of the story is that you you will easily see that this is both uh, uh, this is injective and why it is surjective is because well you start with the uh, germ of a uh, regular function at the point p okay then in a in a neighborhood of the point p it is going to be it is going to look like f by g and it is going to be the image of under this uh, the same f by g under alpha so it is trivially surjective it is trivially surjective just by the definition of regular function regularity at a point okay uh, what is an element here an element here is germ of a regular function at the point okay but what is a regular function at a point it is supposed to be given by it is a regular function is something that has to locally look like a quotient of polynomial so a regular function at this point is in a neighborhood of that point is going to look like look like f by g okay where f and g are uh, regular functions uh, where f and g are regular functions uh, uh, f and g are polynomials in fact okay 
polynomials polynomial functions on the affine space in which x is embedded okay. So, but then f by so that but but then that f by g will also be here uh, it makes sense of an uh, as an element here and alpha will carry it on to your germ. So, it is surjective it is injective it is surjective so it is an isomorphism. So, uh, so uh, clearly alpha is an isomorphism. So, it is it just a just a movements thought will tell you that alpha is an isomorphism. So, so in, in other words uh, you have this formula okay. So, uh, so the moral of the story is that whenever you want to calculate whenever you want to go down to commutative algebra and try to focus attention at a point all you will be doing is always trying to look at this ring which is you know you take you will have some finitely generated k algebra which is an integ integral domain these are how affine coordinate rings of varieties look like and then you will have to mac localize it at a maximal ideal okay and so these are the rings that you have to study in commutative algebra if you want to get uh, uh, what happens geometrically at a point on a variety. So, the study of the uh, you know uh, geometrically the study of functions in a neighborhood of a point on a variety that is reduced uh, to the commutative algebra of trying to study localizations of finitely generated k algebras which are integral domains such rings which are affine coordinate rings at maximal ideals okay. So, this is what one has to do okay. So, this is how local rings uh, enter into uh, uh, geometry okay and uh, uh, but uh, uh, interestingly enough the local rings were produced by geometry okay they were defined by geometry and then uh, uh, here is how they come uh, commutative algebraically at least in the case of algebraic geometry. So, I will stop here.